we may have run a plethora of NLP and ML operations in various data processing buttons. Yet, what should you do? Should you wish to make them scalable and want to automate the administration of the created models? Stick around. Dataflow ML, one of the most recent Google Cloud offerings, is here for rescue. Hi, this is Aniket Agrawal working for Google as a strategy cloud engineer. Our primary objective is to perform text clustering within its Dataflow pipeline. Here, we'll rely on Apache Beam JupyterLab extension to execute the entire pipeline. At high level, we'll use Dataflow ML to administer the pre-trained models for Spacey and Scikit-learn sequentially. The Spacey model will be used to vectorize the words and convert them into their 300-dimensional word embeddings. Then these vectors will be assigned to their respective scikit-learn word clusters. Then the pipeline data or the p-collection output can be visualized easily using interactive beam tab, which is differentiated in this particular notebook. In today's world, NLP is becoming exceedingly important as more and more businesses and organizations seek to derive insights from the text data. Hence, there are a lot of points which do really justify the importance of word clustering. It can help us certainly in enhancing the search engine results, in simplifying document text and analytics, and quicker retrieval of significant information from various documents and large datasets. Let's dive into a few theoretical particulars. So without further ado, let's get started. First, we'll examine what Dataflow is, why it's so important, and how it works. At a high level, Dataflow is a fully managed service for creating, building, and executing the Apache Beam pipelines. It achieves this in a cost-effective, fast, and serverless manner within the Google Cloud ecosystem. Chunks called p-collections can be processed easily using functions called p-transforms. Dataflow can handle both batch and stream processing and can automatically scale to meet demand. Therefore, it provides a powerful tool for analyzing data in real time for analytics and various ETL operations. This is the central theme of this entire video for which we were desperately waiting, right? We'll be exploring the key benefits and features of Dataflow ML for running ML pipelines at scale. At its core, Dataflow ML allows you to run ML models or large datasets using Apache Beam. To do so, it combines the capabilities of Dataflow with Apache Beam's Run Inferis API. Hence, with Dataflow ML, you can easily process massive datasets, train complex ML models, and deploy them to production with ease. There are diverse handling patterns for the models, notably sequential and run chain. As for the below architecture diagram, we'll use Spacey and Scikit-learn model handlers sequentially. These vectors are clustered using Scikit-learn Burge clustering, after which the final findings are reported and visualized. Now we'll take a closer look at what Spacey is and why it's such an important and powerful tool when it comes to national language processing. Spacey is an open source Python NLP library that is designed to be fast, efficient, and easy to use. It provides a wide range of tools and functionalities for performing various NLP tasks, including tokenization, part of speech tagging, and named entry recognition. To achieve all of this, it provides various pre-trained models that can be used out of the box in order to generate vectors or embeddings for the text. For clustering the word vectors, scikit and Burge clustering is employed. It is a hierarchical algorithm that is designed to be fast and memory efficient, making it well tailored for the large datasets. And finally, Burge clustering is easy to use with scikit to cluster your text and any kind of dataset. Enough of theoretical details. Now it's straight to the notebook demo. First, we'll create an Apache Beam Vertex AI Workbench notebook. For that, visit the Dataflow section in the GCP console. Click on Workbench, followed by User Manage Notebooks. Now to create a new notebook, click on the plus sign followed by Apache Beam and without GPUs. After specifying name, region, network, click on create. I'll move ahead with the default parameters. Wait for 2-3 minutes for the Open Jupyter Lab option to become enabled. Click on Open Jupyter Lab. Once the launcher opens up, click on Apache Beam 2.46.0 for Python 3. You can begin executing all of the mentioned code cells here onwards. Now the actual implementation fun begins. First things first, we'll install all the required packages including Spacey and Scikit-learn. As the kernel selected is Apache Beam rather than Python, the installation instructions will differ slightly. Enable all the relevant APIs such as Cloud Storage, Dataflow, and Notebook. It can be done in code or via the GCP console. Here we'll focus on the programmatic approach. Using gcloud command, we'll list all the services and take into account the titles corresponding to the relevant service names. Now we'll enable Cloud Storage, Dataflow, and Notebook APIs. Now all you need are training and testing datasets containing a lot of relevant words. The sample files are supplied for your convenience in testing in the description below. In totality, 307 words belonging to four categories, namely wildlife, food, medical, and technology are taken into account. If we read the test and train data files, We can easily observe that 196 words are taken for testing purpose and 111 are meant for the training. Now we'll run a simple text factorization code cell. 
For this, we download and load the SPACI model. Allow at least 1-2 minutes for the process to complete. We'll apply it on an example word Google. For creating this vector, the loaded model NLP essentially passes text through several phases like tokenization, part of speech tagging and named entity recognition. We run this code cell and there you go, a 300 dimensional vector is produced. For all of the 111 words of the training dataset, 111 word vectors are created using the large model loaded in the previous step. This results in a 2D matrix having 111 rows and 300 columns. With the help of this matrix, the model is trained and this is the output, indicating 4 clusters. The prediction results indicate cluster 0 assignments followed by 3s, followed by 2s and finally by 1s. So if you look at the entire CC file, you can easily observe that the cluster 0 in fact corresponds to the wildlife related terms, for example animals, habitat, biodiversity. This is followed by cluster 3, which is meant for food related terms such as chocolates, fruits and vegetables. This is followed by terms such as computer, smartphone, tablets assigned to cluster 2 for technology. And finally, the last set of words belong to cluster 1 for medical, including epidemic, fever, flu, etc. Now we'll work with Beam's Run Inference API for sequential model handling. For this, we need to define and create the handlers. First, we'll create the SPACI model handler for vectorizing words, for which necessary modules are imported first. The class SPACI infer is created to leverage SPACI for inference. It will define, load, and apply the model. The main logic is encapsulated inside the function run inference, which creates 300 dimensional embeddings for each and every single word and stores them in a list called infers. Similarly, for clustering vectors, scikit-learn model handler is created for handling numpy arrays. Again, we begin with the necessary inputs. We'll dump the Birch clustering model trained earlier into a pickle file, which is further passed as a model URI input for the handler. Now comes the main step. We'll build and execute the entire word clustering pipeline. Here, we'll rely on Interactive Runner for iterative development and inspection of pipelines. So after specifying the runner's interactive, we define and run the pipeline. First, we'll extract all the words from the CSV file. Then SPACI run inference operation is performed on these words to create their 300 dimensional embeddings. This is followed by executing scikit-learn run inference to create clusters for these 300 dimensional vectors. As you can see in the output, prediction result is consisting of two components. One, the array which represents the 300 dimensional embedding for the word and the cluster 0 is inferred for this particular vector. And the model ID is the URI which we actually talked about earlier that is in the form of pickle file. The entire procedure is repeated for all the 196 test words and we'll see this output in the form of pandas data frame. The word to cluster assignment could be visualized using Apache Beam Interactive Beam module. As you can see, the first set of words assigned to the wildlife cluster, that is cluster 0. Followed by the next set of food related terms assigned cluster 3. There are zero false positives and false negatives for this small dataset. As the dataset grows larger, the 100% accuracy cannot be guaranteed. And then the medical terms are assigned cluster 1. There are few challenges that do come into picture. For example, the word virus can belong to the technical as well as the wildlife cluster. Similarly, the word meat can also be related with wildlife as well as food. If a word is supposed to be placed in more than one cluster, it is referred to as fuzzy clustering. Our focus for this demo will be hard clustering where each word will belong to exactly one cluster. And finally, the text set involving the word Google is assigned cluster 2. We'll visualize the pipeline data or the output in the form of P collection. This could be done programmatically using Apache Beam Interactive Beam modules. But our focus will be on using the Interactive Beam tab, which is specifically provided by this particular notebook. That's all for part 1, but don't go anywhere, as still there is a lot more to come. In the next part, we'll visualize all of these P collections and see the entire pipeline getting exported as a data flow job. So see you over there. Thanks a lot for viewing this one. Let's sign off for now.